I do. It's time for Spider and Old Scooter again. This is the audiobook format edition. As you can see, if you've seen one of these before, uh, which would please me to death, uh, this is not my usual format. I'm only shamelessly promoting one book <clears throat> instead of two. And I'll tell you why in a minute. But right now we're here to play Spider Solitaire. I've got tales to tell you about life in the East Mountains. And uh, and we'll talk about why we're using this strange new format tonight. So we'll get on with the game. Just to come on with you. Hi there, Spider Mac. Spider Mac only makes these flash appearances in this format, like there, which I imagine ticks her off something fierce. That was no good. What a strange way to start. Scooter pie. Um, there are a few moves to be made, and I will make them. A couple of fives. I'm going to have to try on that. But not much else I'm going to have to try, or even can. So let's see what happens here. Ace doesn't do much for me. I'll try this one then and get another ace. Thanks a lot, Spider-Mac. So the reason for this format, I'm making an audio book. I'm actually going to read it out loud and edit it and put it together and, and put it on the Ms. book block. And so anyone who's interesting can, uh, interested, I'm sure you're all very interesting, who is uh, interested can uh, download it or listen to it online. I'm not sure exactly how that's going to work yet. As usual, I'm a little behind on the technology, but I am learning how to edit, which is quite a hoot since I spent years and years and years editing. But in those days, you actually sliced tape with uh, razor blade, special razor blade cutting instruments, and you put the tape together with special sticky tape. I'm sure many, many of you knew that, but it's way different editing on a software program. So I'm having to learn new stuff again, which is not all unfun, I have to admit. I resist all that learning stuff of being convinced, as so many of us old people are, that we already know everything. At least some old people I know seem to think that. I'm relatively sure I don't know everything. Oh, I know a lot, though. Woo so, um, I'll show you how the book reading is going to go. If you're listening to it, it should be a fairly conventional audiobook, you know some person reading, maybe slightly adopting different voices for different characters. I'm not great at all that, but I'm going to take a shot at it. But it's going to be published here on YouTube, and um, so there will be a video that goes along with it. And the video will be this format. That's why I call this the audiobook format edition, as may have been obvious. But instead of the game... There is the text. So I'll drop the game back. I think the text will go here. Got a few things I got to get off the desktop. But anyway, I'll sit here and, and read the best I can. And I won't be talking to camera. I'll just be reading the book, concentrating, trying to not make goof ups. And then I'm going to have an electronic uh, stopwatch on screen somewhere where I can mark where I inevitably do mess up. So I can go back and find the places to edit uh, easily. So I, I thought I'd read a few lines to give you a sense of what the uh, uh, the YouTube thing will. You can shut your eyes and see what it would sound like as an audiobook, or shield your eyes. The creature, apparently not overly concerned with this smaller creature, me, making post-historic sounds and probably odors, turned to look. Its rack of horns made this movement like being acquired by an old radar array. Twenty points. I'm not a very outdoorsy person, as I may have mentioned, but I am sure not one of my hunter pals has ever seen anything remotely like this monster elk. Not even in museums. See, I looked at camera, I won't do that. But anyway, that's the way it's going to go. So you can 
download the audio if you want an audio book. I'm sure that will be possible. And um, I'll put it on chapter by chapter on my book blog. When I get around to get, getting that done, I'll let you know and you can go check it out. So anyway, back, that's why I call that the, this the audiobook format edition. Uh, you probably won't see it many more times, or maybe I'll decide it's just what I do, and it's easier than changing it all the time, and who knows what'll happen. Certainly not I. So we're getting a few moves. We're approaching the middle of the game. That's when you finish the third deal, making all the plays you can, and I pretty much have, it looks like. No, I haven't. All right, now I'm uh, $67 in the hole. 500 to play, 550 to break even. Goes the landlady. And that gives the house a $50 margin, and they charge you a dollar a play for 17 plays. I've been charged that. So 50 plus 17 is $67 which is a modest amount to be in the hold, if you ask me. Hold, hold, not hold. I don't think I could stand it in the hold of an old wooden ship. Like so many, many of our adventurous predecessors traversed the world, and the less fortunate traversed as slaves in the holds of those stinking slave ships. Humans are a, a strange creature. No, they're not a creature. They're strange creatures. And I'm quick to acknowledge that the strangeness is highly varied creature to creature. Some of you creatures are hardly strange at all. I, on the other hand, am not making great progress here. I have not punched a single hole. In the thin blue line, as you can tell, it seems to help if I admit how badly I'm doing sometimes. I'm just still intrigued with the game, but sometimes I'm a little hurt that I do so badly. You got that, Spider-Mac? Hurt. Hmm. Anyway, I'm unaware of, and, and once again, this is... Just my ignorance. I'm sure there are quite provable facts out there about this, but I'm, I'm unaware of many um, authors who do their own audiobook. Now, it could be that nearly all of us self published types do, and I just don't know it yet. I'll find out eventually, but that's what I'm doing. And I do have, or any author does have the advantage as he reads a book he wrote of knowing what the author had in mind when he wrote this awkward sentence or that strange paragraph. Whereas I have heard audiobooks where I'm pretty sure the guy reading it had no idea what the author had in mind because nothing was transmitted. Good, bad, or indifferent. Just sort of word salads. Well, I don't have that excuse. So... It's about it. $78. That's the new format. And I'm going to take little quickies about uh, life in the East Mountains, east of Albuquerque, this low row of mountains, and then high mountains at either end, the Manzanos at one end, the Sandias at the other. And we are on the Manzanitos, the little Manzanos. Um, and we're at 7,500 feet, more or less. And... Um, It's been showering off and on around us. We've had little spritzels, nothing big today. Had good solid quarter of an inch shower yesterday afternoon. Uh, but we've gotten a bit, it's been cloudy and wonderful and very mountainy. And so up drives our neighbor, uh, um, neighbors, Robert and Stephanie, calling out to borrow our uh, chip scanner, our RFID channer, scanner, um, because. Uh, a dog had 
joined Robert in his pickup truck. I'm not sure whether Stephanie was in the truck when it happened or not. Stephanie was here for this. But anyway, they had this huge dog. An incredible, beautiful dog. It looked like it uh, was a spotted Dalmatian-like in the chest and this black saddle. It had clear lines of delineation and spots of brown. This noble sort of half-hound, half-pointer face. Weighed 90 pounds at least. Big dog. Robert had been driving along through a much harder rain than we got here, a real downpour, and this dog was on the side of the road, running around, getting in the road and everything. Robert pulled over, opened his door, and this huge dog dived into Robert's uh, truck. Wet, soaking, shaking, thunder fearsome. You know, dogs just get crazy with thunder, and there was lots of thunder. So Robert brought him home. We tried to scan him. Couldn't do it. Robert took him down to the uh, the local vet, which is a good 10 miles away. Uh, they scanned him successfully, found the owner, called the owner, reunion done. End of wonderful dog story, but incredible how we're out here in the woods, you know, we save each other's dogs and look for each other's dogs and cats and do all that stuff. Uh, and the other thing is this. Another friend of mine lives maybe two or three miles from here. Um, said, look what decided to take a nap in my tree. And there you go. It's a big brown bear. It's a ponderosa. He says he's 30 feet off the ground. Uh, here's a second picture. Um, but we all love our bears out here. We're living in their territory. And we try, we do everything we can to keep them from becoming uh, used to humans. Yes, it does well. But anyway, life in the mountains is wonderful. It's it's uh, refreshing. The weather is cool. Rains are finally coming. And all's well with nature stuff. I hope all is well with you and all of your nature stuff. Good night. <laughs>